you can never do it like I When you see man pull up and slide Man step to the room with legends, Rio and Steve, you know it's a vibe Check the podcast, what you wanna know? Don't ask me, go and ask Joe If you're talking Premier League, he's on the front line and I gotta go oh. It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is It's a vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is Vibe, vibe with five, vibe with five, and you already know what it is it's a five with five, five with five, and you already know this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back after a phenomenal performance by us, Manchester United fans, drawing 2-2 with Liverpool. Joel Bayer, Stephen Housen, Rio Ferdinand. Listen, Arsenal, Arsenal, Chester United, we did it, guys. <laughs> An amazing, amazing point. An amazing point for Man United. Well, it's not really amazing for you guys, but great two points dropped for Liverpool. Um, on our title chase. But yes, you guys were all at the game yesterday. We had Patrice ever at the game yesterday as well. Mm. Flex. All the stars were out. It was brilliant. Yeah, man. It was a... It was a, a mad... I don't even know how to feel about the game yesterday. The best part about the game yesterday was that Liverpool dropped points, hopefully for Arsenal to capitalise. Forget Man United almost. It was one of those, it's a weird, weird situation to be in. We were on the way to the game in the car, me and Patrice and Flex and like, what do we expect? But none of us could even pick a result. I actually got a draw right. I, I called a draw, but I just, none of us, you just don't know what Man United is going to turn up. It's, um, and you look at it and, and I just look at the the, the positives from it. Um, Camboala was immense. Young 19-year-old centre-back. And Kobe Mayne, who goes on and scores an absolute wonder guy, his first goal at Old Trafford. Can it get any better? Steve? Yeah, a bit like Rio. It's like, I, I think I text Rio in the morning and said, I'll take a draw right now. Um, mm. Because I was look, I was not looking forward to going in the slightest. I thought it was an absolute pumping. But, you know, we started well. I mean, we had the offside chance within 90 seconds of, of the game starting. Mm. And you think can lightning strike twice here and but for Liverpool cheating again then we would have come away with all three points mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. I mean <laughs> on, on my end it was brilliant if I'm honest with you like I, I say brilliant I would have loved the three points if it wasn't because of Aaron Crowder and Wan Bissaka like you gotta stay on your feet lad you gotta stay on your feet um and and me and you were saying last week weren't we Rio everyone was looking going oh Arsenal, this, you know, you guys should have won here and there, but there's so many twists and turns in this title run that anything can happen. And I think now we're in a prime position. We ain't got easy runs, but uh, bringing it back to United, um, I felt like even though Liverpool dominated first half, you still had chances in the first few minutes. You know, you you could have went ahead. Yeah, Steve, Steve makes a good point. And in the first five, ten minutes, we're looking at each other going, well, this is what we were asking for. A little bit of like, heart, determination, just off the cuff going for it. Um, and they, they managed to create a couple of chances. They disallowed goal, obviously, because of the uh, offside. But you, you look at it and think, right, the boys, the reaction is exactly what you wanted after the Chelsea game. You want that that intensity and rolled your sleeves up and ready. You know the assignment. It's Liverpool coming to town. We need to get a result and we need to start sharp. And so that happened. Um, but then, obviously, the, the inconsistencies that we... That, that reared their head, yes, with Brentford, but also with Chelsea. And many games we've seen in the season mm. straight away come to the fore again because the. And, and we, we can get onto this. It'd be a good point to go on it now. With Steve, mm. I'd be interested in what you think as well. The manager came out before, and I was, it was on the Insta Five Instagram page about saying that the style of play, if anybody can't see the style of play, like, I don't know what you're looking at almost, basically, and that we have got a style of play. Um, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I just, for the life of me, I swear to you, I, I give him the benefit of the doubt every time. And I'm looking at it and just thinking, like, well, what is it? Like I said yesterday after the game on the, 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 the match three, day 360, if Kamikaze, open sesame, kind of no control of the game football is what we're looking for, he's got it now done. He's, um, he's, do, he's doing a, a great job at it because that's what we're playing. And you can put that down to injuries or whatever, but even there's loads of teams that have got a lot of injuries. We've got a lot of injuries, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of teams that have injuries, but you, they still play a similar style of football to what you, you, they're trying to, trying to achieve. I don't think 
Ten Hag style of football is this kamikaze chaos football. Man's he playing, he's track. playing game six NBA basketball playoffs like every match, like every yeah. match. And, it's and, crazy. That, and, that, and, that's, and then that type of football leads to, it leads to seeing players at their worst at times. So, for instance, Casemiro, for all the he's won and the great player that he's been, he will look a worse player when the, the tactics are the way they are, when it's open transition football, when there's big spaces around him. In that midfield, at times, another midfielder is 20 yards away, 30 yards away. That never happened at, at Real Madrid. So you don't see his worst traits, which is, which is his mobility. Same with Kobe Mainu. Their worst traits are probably their mobility. So you do things with a structure of a team so that you don't see that. We're doing things that you're going to see exactly their worst trait. So it makes them look worse at times. Um, you look at Hoyland. How many balls did we get in the box for him? How many balls did we get in and around in, in the channel for him to run onto? We, didn't, we, we don't seem to be playing to his strength. And then you've got the two centre-backs. You've got a 19-year-old centre-back, zero protection in front of him. Like, the, the amount of times that Liverpool plops, threaded the ball through from back, straight through to a, a attacking or mid, an attacking midfield player, behind our midfield to run at our back four. Mate, mm-hmm. like, like, for a night, that's why I say his performance, it was on the, on the eye, it was great. But if you look at the details, he's had a magnificent performance because he had to deal with so much things that a structured team would never have to deal with, have to deal with or a structured team wouldn't have to deal with as much. So there, there, there's a lot of, I don't know, we, there's a lot of things that are going on in the team where, you're, where you're, we're not seeing the best of our players and I think that's because of the way the team set up. We did well. We did well. Uh, Steve, your your thoughts, Steve? Yeah, uh, I agree on both of those points. Um, the the structure is is problematic, I think. And I was sort of making some notes during the the Chelsea game that maybe just let the handbrake off and, and let's have it. Almost Kevin Keegan, mid-90s-esque Newcastle is the way that this United team can thrive because you got to put yourself in Ten Hag's shoes a little bit. At the start of the season, we couldn't score any goals. We seem to find goals at the moment. We are scoring some goals. But now we're not keeping clean sheets. So finding the balance is hard for him. What I can see is like a bad version of what... Liverpool's early Klopp team was where they're very, very transitional and they're pressing heavy. I think we press quite well and I think we pressed Liverpool quite well yesterday but if you beat the first line of the press there, there's Conza. too big a gap. Conza. And that there's a massive, massive gap to the back line. And I wonder if one tweak to United's midfield might help it where if Bruno stopped playing as an eight and start, uh, started playing as an eight rather than a ten, can he get involved in a rotation? Because quite often you'll see Casemiro or Menu dragged out to one of the wings to give a little bit of protection because the fullbacks are high. And then the other one has been high pressing the ball. So there is nobody in midfield. So they're not getting past Menu and they're not getting past Casemiro. They're just not there to go past. It's just an enormous gap. It's like six attacking players and, and a back four just sort of waiting on the halfway line. But then when you, you're up against absolute speed demons like Nunes, who's ridiculously fast, Harry Maguire can't look at him and think he can catch him. So you're, you're hoping Willie can, but then he's going to have to give himself five yards. So the defence just naturally starts to drop five or ten yards, sort of anticipating a big dosh over the top. And before you know it, those screenshots start appearing where there's 40 metres between the defence and the nearest player. You know, and... And I think that's the, the worst thing is that United don't seem to be able to stop a transition. We seem to be better at, okay, first half we didn't manage a single shot, but that's where just looking at shots does you dirty a little bit because we actually did have opportunities that didn't lead to a shot, but it was really good penetration, really good opportunities that we didn't quite have the final ball for. And Liverpool had like 14, 15 shots in the first half. You know, we've equalised with our first shot of the second half. And then we have a bit of a what a goal by the way. What a goal by the way. What There's only Bruno goal. on that pitch that has the audacity to try that. Yeah. Maybe Ganacho, he might try something like that actually. Yeah. But there's not a lot of them that would even attempt that. The fact that he's even seen him off his off his line with with the the 
the amount of time he had to think about what to do is is crazy. But I, I wonder if bringing Bruno a bit further back because we've seen him do it. Like it's not like he can't play as like a bit of a box to box eight. I think it probably suits his personality better. He get him on the ball, have him playing forward balls rather than playing with his back to goal and trying to create a bit of magic because he gets crowded out. And I it's think so he's going to find them a bit more. It's so funny you say that, Steve, because I was talking with Irvin yesterday and he said something really, really similar. He reckons he reckons you're probably going to be getting the most out of his position when you play him right there. That's why I was listening to you. It's funny that you say that. Um, when you're looking at the goals, though, the quality, Rio, you spoke about Mano's goals and yes, even I'm the type that says we shouldn't really hype him up too much, but bruv, what are you doing shooting from there? Like to get it in. I was so proud. Like I was, I was genuinely, genuinely proud. Yeah. Like there's some moments at the stadium at grounds that you watch games and you go like, everyone's looking at each other. Like, did you see what, did you just see what happened there? Oh my, oh my. that was one of their moments because it was kind of out of nothing as well. It was a good move to be fair. But it was just like... He, he started got, it as well, Rio. He yeah, started exactly. that move. And the, the audacity for him to even take that on at that point. But his two best moments, it seems, in a May United shirt, have been in the same position. That area of the box walls away. And yeah. then... and then So it's starting to lead me to think, is he maybe better off being a little bit higher as well? I mean, but the problem is, is that we've got Bruno, the last to operate in those areas, but you don't... And, and then say maybe Manu. So... He's got to maybe like take away a little bit from his game, but once he gets in those areas, he is cold as you like, and I want to see him in there more. We've got to find a way of maybe ha- helping that to happen. But he didn't. He, I don't think he actually played like, one of his best games yesterday for Man United in, in the way that he's uh, in, he's come into the team. Mm. But again, he had an impact, and at this level, that's sometimes enough. Like Salah's the same. Salah didn't play well yesterday, but gets one of the goals. It's put yeah. what I know, but. Kobe, I mean, he, every time he plays at the moment, it seems like he's doing something or a few things that makes you go, at this age, this isn't normal. What did you and, and Patrice think? Um, obviously, we have the Match Day 360 vlog that's out on the channel now. Uh, here's a little mm. highlight of what you should expect to see. Remember when uh, Nani uh, in uh, Anfield, so right. Jimmy Gaga give you like yeah. a massive tackle and we come all around with five day. Then uh, Scorsi, when he see Nani crying, he say <laughs> <laughs> Amazing video, amazing post-match mm. as well. Rio, what do you, did you and Patrice, what do you guys think of Maynard? I mean, obviously you guys had a lot of chats in the car and at the game. Did you guys talk about him? I think the biggest mistake you can make with a young player is to expect perfection every week, to expect these type of things to happen every game. Um, but the problem is that he's producing something almost every game where you, you, you do scratch your head and go, he shouldn't be doing this. Even his composure at times, and he just lays a simple one-touch ball off. Some, most other kids are thinking, I've got to get it down and do something. The way he's strength, he's strengthening people off, like he's bodying people at his age, like ridiculous. I remember Patrice grabbed my leg after he strength someone in the game oh my god because when we were younger and we were playing if someone done that to you it was like listen now with social media it's living it's living forever <laughs> but he's he's a I think he's a he's a, a really 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 top talent and I think just the temperament alone for me suggests that he's going to be here to stay Man. yeah I think he he wasn't at his best on the ball yesterday he didn't really lose loads of possession but he didn't really second half he made a few big tackles in his second half well, yeah, he's. I think he won eight of nine tackles, um, which I think was one of the highest in, in the match. So I, I think he sort of just did a job a little bit more yesterday where he played with without the ball. And I think that's what that plus, like you said, his temperament and his maturity. Where does he go from here? Because like you see young players come in and they make mistakes and they do things that you, you go, he'll learn from that. But what's Mainu doing that you go, oh, we'll learn from that? Like, he's just doing everything right. Like, I, I can't even predict sort of the trajectory of him because even Rooney, you saw flashes of Rooney, but he would make like selfish mistakes and stuff where he was trying to overplay. 
Mainu's not doing that. So, like, where's the trajectory for him? Where does he improve? How does he get better? Do you know what? Do you know what increases him as a, improves him as a player? It's trophies. Because you're right, he's doing a lot of right stuff up. But he's that level that you think he's going to go at, Steve. He can only go at that level. It's like Rio. We could all see the potential when he was at West Ham, when he was at Leeds. But it wasn't until he was in a team where he was winning trophies year in, year out for the majority of it that you could go, yeah, he's there at world class level. You, you need, you need, you need, you need the team to find some sort of consistency within a structure. Mm-hmm. And then you, I think you'll see even more. And then comes the winning element. But until you get that consistency of teammates, performance, structure, the whole eleven playing a certain way, and then he can build on what he's got now. He's playing off instinct at the moment. Because that's what you do as a young kid. You play off instinct. You play off like, you try things, you're fearless. Some do. Um, but there's going to be, next season will be the testing time because people will know about him exactly and go, right, I've had time to watch him and players study. They've got enough data now enough information to see is how then he switches it up again next season. What does he do? But I do think any great young player, they do need the the consistency and platform of a very solid foundation of a team to be able to really produce their stuff on a regular. You'll see flashes, but Mm. seeing it consistently, you need that other stuff, I think. You're going to see it for England as well, I reckon. I reckon he's going to, because he's so cool and calm. You saw it against Belgium already, but you're going to see when he's around good players and playing well consistently, he's going to look like world-class. Like If he, if he plays for England, the only way he plays is if Foden plays on the left wing. And I don't think Foden should play on the left wing. But who's screaming for it at the moment? Southgate has to pick a system on, and then the stick to the system. Like, he who do you make start... the same mistake that Sven made where you just try and shoehorn in all the best players because they're the best players. He wants to pick the system and then get the best players for the system. Yeah. Otherwise, we're in a Lampard Gerard Scholes problem again. Yeah, but we're, the difference is Lampard Gerard Scholes, none of them are Declan Rice, which is what you needed in that three. So we've got the Declan Rice bit there. He's got to play two, two creative players on the other side of him. That might be a bit ballsy for old Mr. Sparkling Water, though. So, uh, Last bit before we, we move on after our, our, our surprising draw Mark, yesterday. Let's uh, talk about the dive, can we? Go, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Wait, wait, wait Rio, what are you saying, Rio? Like, strangling dudes say, last weekend, nothing. No one gets said about it. Where's VAR when Van Dyke's trying to like put hands on people? And then we got this dive this weekend. No contact at all. It's simulation. Therefore, it's a dive. Jeez. You know what? I... I Steve. I thought it was a pen though, you know, Steve. Steve. And do you know why I thought it was a pen? It's not because it was like the hardest challenge you've ever seen. I thought it was it was very naive from, from uh, Aaron because if you're going to make that challenge in that box, bro, you got to make sure. That's just basic Sunday league, bro. Like you got to make sure you win the ball there. You can't be in that position and, you know, you, you, you ain't fully got it. You're leaving yourself exposed and, and potentially you'll concede Joel, a penalty. Joel, which he Joel's did. right. I think... I, I think... Initially, when I was in the stadium, I shouted penalty straight away, right? And the, and and just that element alone, he's allowed everyone to think, is it or isn't it a penalty? Oh, is that a penalty? He's allowed the referee to have to make a decision. Aaron wan his best attribute is his slide tackling. He's the best mm. in the game, yeah? Mm. And so you've got to you, you, you give him a little leeway because he's so confident because he, he nine times out of ten, he wins that, yeah? But when you, you could do that anywhere on the pitch, but when you're in your own box... That's when I used to wear the T-shirt. Stay if you stay on your feet. I'm gonna bring them back, right? Because in that area, you just you, you and like Joel said, unless you are 100 percent gonna win the ball, you stand up. I was I, I've, my last 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 resort was always mm. to go to ground in and around the box, right? But mm-hmm. it's it, I understand sometimes, and and my sympathy with Aaron Basaka is that I know mm-hmm. that feeling when you're the, the stakes are high. And someone's got a step on you, a little yard, half a yard on you, and you're thinking they're going to open up with a shot or they're going to tee someone like Seller up. You are sitting, your, your heart is coming out of your mouth. You're panicking. And that's why I think he slid. He, he slid it was in. naive, man. It was yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, naive. I'm not saying he wasn't. I think he was. I, I think it was it's naive. Better. But at the end of the day, there is no contact and he absolutely simulates that he's been fouled. Therefore, it is a dive by the book. Me- when he was like, he's, been, he have done he's, it. he's been cute. I think I think Elliot's been cute, and he and he, he's he's taken the little advantage that he, he he's got through 
Aaron Ramasaka sl- sliding mm. and used it to his advantage. And I would have been wanting the same for my attacking player. What's mm. the point of VAR looking at it, though, and seeing that there's no contact and he's already three quarters of the way down before he's any sort of contact whatsoever? What's the yeah, point? But there, is con- there, is, there is slight contact and also yeah. he's, he's, he's not in control of his body. Oh, my Bissaka. That's one of the key points when they're making that decision too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it, for me, I, I would have, you know, you've seen him given even his free kicks outside the box. So as far as I'm concerned... Don't you start talking. He should have still got to remember bleeding Gabrielle absolutely Hadouken in Hoyland in the area. Yes. See, this is what's yes. annoying. Is we had that one Thursday night. Thursday night, again, no contact with Delo whatsoever. The first one's even iffy, but I'll let you have the first one. Second one, it's a fucking dive. And that's three penalties in two games. Can you imagine Steve. that? got three penalties in two games. Oh, yeah, Steve, you ain't got to beef me, Steve. We're on the same side here this week. You ain't got to beef me. You know what I mean? I didn't want it to be a penalty either, but we are where we are. You know, it's as simple as that. But um, but yeah, it, it was fantastic yesterday. It really was. Uh, most Salah doing what he does again. Most Premier League goals against United. 11 goals. Uh, most Premier League goals scored against Man United at Old Trafford. Six goals. Most Premier League goals scored consecutively against Man United at Old Trafford. Four. Say no more. Mo Salah. Still don't think he's player of the season, but he's up there. Let's move it on to... Klopp only beating this worst United team of a generation once in five attempts. Greatest Liverpool team ever, apparently. Greatest Premier League team ever. Beat United yeah. once. And he said... Once. And he said if, if Arsenal play, if United play the way us, they played yesterday, Arsenal will 100% beat them. Why did he That's, say that? No, no, that, that is to get Man United up for that game. He, he's, he wants that in Man United's mindset when they go into that game to prove him wrong. You, f- you think he went mind bitter? Games. You think huh? he went bitter? It sounded a bit bitter. It's a bit bitter, but it's also mind, mind games. games. Well, he's right, he's, he's right anyway. So we're trying to feed you as much content as possible. Obviously, you can listen to the full version on Spotify, but we do have a part two coming out soon. So please make sure you stay tuned and enjoy the show. Peace.